Okay, what I want to show you in this video is how to take apart a Toyota 4A engine block. Uh, this particular engine block comes from my 4AG 16 value engine. This engine block is a 7 rib. Uh, it, it was produced sometimes in 1987 and it has 7 vertical ribs. These vertical ribs are, are and they make it stronger and it's better able to withstand abuse and whatnot. Uh, the very early uh, big port 4 AGs were actually 3 ribs. 7 ribs is of course better. If you have a 7 rib, uh, that means you also have the 42 millimeter crank journals and the 20 millimeter um, piston pins uh, in the conrads. This does not have to be the case 100%, but it most likely is. However, they have been, there have been cases of, of 7 rib blocks with 40 millimeter cranks, but because of this, let's face it, this engine is pretty old and people mix and match and exchange parts, so of course be sure to check and disassemble the engine. Here I'm going to show you the, the, the ribs. Here you can see them. They may be not so obvious at first, but there's 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, and seven. Okay, enough about the block, let's get to the to the disassembly. Okay, the first thing you want to do is, is remove the oil pan. That's the first step before getting uh, before you can get to the engine internal, the crankshaft and the pistons and the connecting rods. I put some WD forty on the bolts to remove them. They're of course pretty old and rusty and gross and whatnot, but they should be able to come off relatively easily. These are 10 millimeter bolts, regular regular socket wrench. And to remove the last one you need to you need to remove the oil cooler um, plug bolt thing. It's a banjo plug. You remove it and then you can remove the, the, the bolt. Once you get rid of the bolt you, you should get a uh, putty knife and cut the silicon. There, there is no gasket between the oil pan and the oil baffle plate which is underneath the pan. You need to cut the, the away the RTB, the silicon, whatever, in order to be able to, to remove the, the, the oil pan. There will also, there will also not be, uh, even after you cut away the, the RTB, you still need to, to help the pan a bit to, 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 to flex it, to budget, to move it. That's the most easiest way to do this without damaging the pan is to take a, take a piece of wood and hammer, hammer the pan on all sides of it to, to, to move it. And that most likely still won't free it and so you, won't, you still won't be able to move it away with your hand. So the last step is to take, take a screwdriver or something similar and gently wedge it in between the pan and the baffle plate. So be careful not to, not to damage anything, to score it, to go it and lift the pan slowly. Once you remove the pan, you will see the oil baffle pump and the, the oil strainer. Here we are. Next step of course is to remove the strainer. It's held down by three bolts and then one nut. These are somewhat harder to remove. Obviously they've been sitting there for, for almost 30 years now. And, and the old oil and the gunk and whatnot has made them pretty, pretty stuck, stuck down. But don't worry, give it a bit of force and it, it, it should of course come out. Once you remove the bolts and the nut, removing the oil strainer still takes quite a bit of force, but pull down the engine and pull away and it, it should come off. The next step is the, is the oil baffle plate. It, it, it can be removed just by pulling away with your hands. You need to take again a piece of wood and hammer at it from, from underneath and bit by bit from all sides and remove it. When it's ready, again pull it carefully. Be careful not to bend it. Uh, the, 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 this, the gasket, the, the silicon is pretty sturdy and won't give up that easy. Once you remove it, you can take a look at your engine internals. And here they are, the famous or AG. Let's give it. A, let's give it a quick spin to see how it, how it rolls, how it works. It's of course a four-cylinder engine, 81 millimeter bore, and I think 87 or something millimeter stroke. I'm not sure. The first thing to remove the or to remove the 
first need to remove are the conrads. The conrads and the piston conrad um, bearing caps are the first thing. They are head, held down by 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter 12 point nuts. You need a 40 millimeter 12 point socket for it. Uh, I already removed two of them. As you can see in the video, I'm going to show you how to remove, how to remove the remaining two. Uh, they are held down with, with quite a bit of force. Of course, also this is a stage at which you want to make your bearing the oil clearance measurements. Most people use plastic gauge. If you want to see how that's done, just click the, click the link in the video. Uh, once you remove the, the bolts, the next thing is to remove the, the bearing cap. It's relatively easy easy to remove. All you got to do is is take the bearing cap and, and wiggle it a bit, as you can see, and lift it out. And of course, clean it, inspect it, see if there's any damage, if there's any weird, anything weird. This should this should point you in the right direction of any problems you have might you might have been facing with your engine. Okay, to remove the remaining uh, the rest of the assembly, the piston and the conrad itself. You need to wiggle again and move the crankshaft up and right to, 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 to make the conrod release, to make the conrod actually uh, separate from the crankshaft. And once it goes down, you have to push it a bit and get the piston out from the wall. Now, if your um, bores are really worn, you will need a ridge reamer, which will help you remove actually the top part of the, of the bore and get the piston out. My bores weren't very worn, so it was easy to push the piston out. Once you push the conrod and the piston out, you should be careful that it doesn't drop out. You will most likely need a piece of wood to, to, to hammer it just a bit and help it along. So here you can see I'm going to be very gentle, of course, and use only wood, no steel, or nothing. Otherwise, you risk damaging the crankshaft of the bore or, or something. Or something else that is vital for the <coughs> operation of the engine. And there you go, this is what happened to me. The piston fell straight out, hit the engine stand. I'm lucky enough um, that I won't be reusing the pistons and the and the, and the conrods. But be careful. If it drops, it might do damage, it might not, no depends. Now, uh, the conrods uh, have have imprints, inscriptions on them. They have on their sides, they have these little imprints that show you uh, which way when putting it all back together, which way the bearing cap has to be installed. I don't know if you can see it right now. I'll try to wipe the coin so you can see it, but I'm not sure. There is a W in my case, there's a little W letter, like a, or a Greek sigma, imprinted on the side, and it shows which side of the bearing cap goes on which side actually of the of the conrad. The the conrads also have inscriptions on them and I mean like letters on the on the underside of the conrad of the bearing cap. You can see which position the engine which which number it is. Okay I'm going to speed up now to to, to remove the, the the last uh connecting rod and the, and the piston. There's a description. There's also a point of the piston which will show you to which way the piston needs to be turned. This little point goes to the to the, the timing belt side of the engine. Okay, once you remove the, the pistons and the connecting rods, next thing is the rear main oil seal. Now, before you put the engine on the engine stand, there were six bolts on this and you, you were always obviously supposed to remove them. They can even be removed if when the engine is on the engine stand, but it all, depend, it all depends on the engine stand model. To remove this, you need to take, again, a piece of wood and hammer it gently. To, there are two double pins on it, and you have to push it away from them with, 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 with some very gentle hammer action. You cannot, in my case, with my engine stand, I could not remove it. I had to leave it like this and, and have it come out together with the crankshaft. Okay, there we go. The next step is the oil pump. The oil pump, uh, in my case, there was still the timing belt tensioner. It wasn't the oil pump. This is actually useful. It, it, it needs a, to show you that it needs a different socket wrench. 
It's a uh, 10 millimeter again a 12 point. This is actually the same specification as the head bolts, the engine head bolts. Once you have this, it's very easy to remove. Just unscrew it and set it aside. Be careful not to use the, the spring that, that holds it in place. And if it's in good condition, spin it, hear it, listen to it. If it doesn't sound weird, if it's in good condition, keep it, it can be reused. The next thing to remove is the oil pump. It has, um, it uses regular uh, bolts. These are, again, 10 millimeter, just like the oil sump. I'll do fast forward to show you how to remove them. It's very simple, just very obvious and basic. Once you remove the bolts, the next thing to remove will be the, the crankshaft pulley bolt. You need to, uh, I use a piece of wood as you can see in the uppermost part of the video. I block the crankshaft from moving with a piece of wood so I can un unbolt this. Once you remove the bolt, there's the tiny alignment icon tool for the crankshaft. Uh, after that, again, more wood, hammer away, and the oil pump is ready to come off. Again, be very gentle, click it slowly, bit by bit, the left side, right side, and it should start to come off easily. Again, I'll fast forward a bit to show you how it goes. And there comes the oil. Looks pretty messy. Have a have a dish or something, a bowl or some newspaper or something to catch the oil so you don't mess up your working surface. And more hammering, as you can see the crankshaft uh, gear thing is coming out bit by bit. There, uh, somebody put these two timing marks, these go, these go along with the crankshaft timing alignment tool, so be sure to photograph this for reference later. Here's the other pump, this is ASIN, S2, whatever that means. So the best thing, the best idea probably is to, to take the, the alignment tool and, and, and other and these crankshaft uh, parts, put them back on the crankshaft, they will stay with it so we don't lose them. Okay, once you remove the oil pump, the last thing we have to remove before you can get the crankshaft out of the engine are the main bearing caps. Here in the Toyota Workshop Manual, aka the Big Green Book, the VGB, you can see the, the sequence, the pattern in which the bolts have to be removed. There's a total of 10 bolts, and you basically go from the these are 40 millimeter regular socket wrench, socket wrench. <coughs> you basically go from the transmission side from the flywheel side of the engine and then to the timing belt side and so on coming closer to the middle main bearing cap these are held down with quite a bit of force it's a very good idea to get a breaker bar and put it on your, on your wrench it will give you a lot of leverage so you can remove this to remove the bearing cap don't take the bolts out, just push them out, pull them out a bit and then use them as leverage to wiggle the cap left and right and get it out. There. Of course, again, inspect, see if there's anything weird, any damage. Once you remove the, the remaining caps, the main bearing caps, they'll come out the same way. You are ready to remove the crankshaft. That is basically the last step. Be very careful with this. The crankshaft is pretty heavy. Be ready for it. Don't drop it, of course. Prepare some wood. I prepared a bit of a bit of a, a wooden wooden surface to lay the crankshaft down. There you can see my MRP. And there you go. That's my video. I hope hope it was helpful. Like, subscribe, whatever. Have fun. Enjoy your 4AG. All the best.